Hey everybody, it's Lon Sybin, and the other day the folks at Plex announced a way to load up their application inside of Kodi via an add-on that the Plex developers have put together. And to be honest with you, I didn't see a lot of value in that application for me, just given that I have uh, mostly Android TV boxes around the house and I can very easily load up whichever app I want to run on it. But uh, then I got to thinking about folks who are running Open Elec on a, a Raspberry Pi, for example, and this might actually be something of value because if your device only boots into Kodi, this will give you a way to uh, very easily and officially gain access to Plex servers that might be remote to you or uh, just sitting on your network that you'd like to watch some content on. Now, this does require a Plex Pass subscription for it to work. And in full disclosure, Plex provided a Plex Pass subscription to the channel because we do a lot of Plex testing here uh, from time to time. However, nobody is paying for this review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's get in and install this thing. Now, in order to get this running, you have to download it at the moment uh, directly from Plex on their forums, and you'll need to have a Plex Pass password uh, to get into that forum to download the zip file that you need here. Uh, at some point, this will be popping up on the Kodi repository, so you'll be able to find it uh, through a much easier process, which I will show you as we're going through the installation here. But in the meantime, uh, you got to download this little zip file from uh, that Plex forum and then install it onto, uh, in my case, a USB stick that I have got inserted into this Raspberry Pi uh, so that we can continue onward here. It does require a minimum of Kodi 16 for it to run. And if you are running Open Elec, that might mean you have to go to the beta version of Open Open Elec because the official version right now is just running version 15. You need 16 or 17 for this to work. So let's pop into our menu here. I'm going to go over to the system menu and go over to settings. And what we're going to do is go over to the add-ons menu here. Now, uh, if you uh, are looking for it in the repository, you'll just go here to install from repository, and it'll eventually show up in uh, probably the Kodi add-on repository in the near future, where you can kind of browse through uh, all these different services and get it that way. But in the meantime, until it gets there, uh, what we have to do is install it from our uh, little um, USB stick here. So I'm just going to back out here and go over to install from zip file. And what it will do now is give us access to that USB stick. I'm going to go over here to script.plex.0.0.88. That's the current version. I'm going to hit enter over that little thing there. And what you'll see at the bottom of the screen here is a little notification that will tell us when Plex is all set to go. And uh, there it is. So now it is installed, just that easy. And what we're going to do now is go over to our video section here where we'll, where we'll see this now in the add-ons directory here. So if I go to add-ons, you'll see that we have Plex available. And I can just load it up uh, just like so. It'll take a second for it to boot up. And what I have to do first now is sign in. And what it's going to do is uh, generate a code for me. I have to go to that uh, link there, uh, hit that code, and then I can get into my Plex account. So I'm going to go do that right now on my laptop or phone or whatever I have nearby. And then we will see how this all works. All right, so here we are on the main screen of our Plex add-on running inside of Kodi. It looks very familiar if you have used Plex on a, a TV box before. It has a very similar feel to it. Uh, all my libraries are separated out the way I set them up on my server. I can go over here to the Expanse, for example, and uh, play that back, and it will resume from where I last left off on another device here, so you can see how uh, all of that works there. So it does spin up very quickly. All the video is being uh, pumped through Kodi, so you're not adding any real overhead here insofar as video playback is concerned by using uh, this add-on with it. Uh, you do have some controls here, so you can uh, force different quality settings, so you can force a, a transcode if you want. This might be useful, especially if you're using the Plex DVR and recording things at MPEG-2. And if you have a Raspberry Pi like this one, uh, unfortunately, these Raspberry Pis don't decode uh, MPEG-2 by default. So you have to either buy a license or uh, you can have your Plex server uh, force a transcode to make it playable without having to get that license. It'll convert that MPEG-2 to MPEG-4 and uh, you're off and running. The license is only a couple of bucks and it might be worth getting anyhow, but uh, you can do all that. Uh, one thing you can't do with the DVR on this at the moment is actually set up any recordings. So I can't actually set up a recording from here, but I can watch the recordings that I have previously set. Uh, you can take a look here also at my movie collection when I go back to the home screen here. Uh, I did find, and this is a Kodi thing on this particular device, not a issue with the plug-in here, uh, that my Blu-ray MKVs play back really slowly on this device. And I think it's an optimization issue with uh, the version of Kodi that they have installed on Open Elec. It does seem to be working better now than it did before, but it has felt a little bit uh, slower and not as responsive in prior testing. But it actually looks like it may have corrected itself uh, 
since I rebooted this thing since my initial installation, so that might improve. But you can, of course, always go back over here and force it down to a lower quality setting if, uh, if you are having trouble playing things back. So it isn't working too bad here at all. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you is that you can play back content from remote Plex servers on here also. So one of the cool things about Plex is that you can have a Plex server running at a friend's house in another state or another country, and you can connect and stream video from that. And uh, when we were testing out the Plex DVR a few months ago, they have uh, let us uh, maintain our connection to their server. So I have it right now attached to a server in California, and I'm located in uh, Connecticut here. And if I go back over to TV shows, uh, we can go ahead and play back an episode of 2020 that they have uh, stored on their server remotely. So if I hit play here, uh, what will happen here is I can resume from where I last left off on their server, and hopefully within a second or two, it will be streaming video uh, back from, let me just get to my other camera here to avoid copyright issues, uh, back from California, and we're able to uh, watch this video now remotely uh, off-site, and it's working pretty decently and about what you would expect out of a Plex server typically. So it does seem to be working pretty well. It is a little buggy, though, right now, on the Raspberry Pi at least. It, it is a, a first uh, release of this thing. So sometimes what happens, especially when there's video transcoding going on, is that sometimes it'll play the video back uh, inside of Kodi itself and not on the add-on. I have to leave the add-on to actually go back and watch the content. That looks like something that'll be fixed as they continue to update this thing. In fact, I started working on this this afternoon and uh, by the evening there was already an update uh, put up on that forum page. So I think we'll be seeing a lot of updates coming out very quickly for this over the next couple of days and weeks as they're uh, continuing to develop it. So I also installed it on my NVIDIA Shield TV, and I was able to install it the exact same way with the exact same file that we did for the Raspberry Pi. These are uh, platform agnostic little add-ons. They just, they just want to see Kodi. They don't care what Kodi is running on to get working. And uh, the, the Shield actually worked great because it inherited all the video settings and all the audio settings from my Kodi installation. So when I went and played back my Blu-ray MKVs, it automatically switched my TV into uh, 1080p at 24 frames per second and I also got my DTS HD and Dolby True HD audio working too. So whatever your uh, base system supports for audio and video, uh, your add-on should support as well because it is piping all that video through the Kodi uh, infrastructure to get those videos played back. Now, is there a purpose for this? Well, I think the, the best use case is for something like this Raspberry Pi where you have a device that uh, just boots up into Kodi and you really can't install a, a native Plex app on that device. Although I can't really see it being useful if you have something like an NVIDIA Shield TV because you can run both Kodi and you can run Plex and you don't really need to uh, run one inside the other, but I guess you can. So I think if you've got like one of those uh, Android boxes that are you, know, you get from Amazon that just boot right into Kodi and nothing else, this might be really useful. Or again, if you are on a Raspberry Pi like we are here, uh, that also can be pretty useful as well. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of other use cases come out of this uh, little development here, but I know a lot of you are always interested in this stuff, so I wanted to show you what it looks like. This is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.